Namaste. My name is Aditya Goyal, and I am a sophomore at St. Mark's School of Texas. I am also learning Sanskritam. I'm very excited to be presenting at the 2021 WAVES Conference. I really enjoyed it last time it was in Dallas. I'm going to be presenting the relevance of Sanskritam and Panini's Ashadhyayi in natural language processing. What is natural language processing? Natural language processing is the interdisciplinary field between computer science and linguistics. It is the way that a computer understands the human language, the way a human would speak it. NLP combines the likes of both a STEM-based topic and a humanities more abstract topic. NLP is the bridge between these subjects that helps connect the artificial intelligence to our human intelligence to make AI more capable of human interpretation. It is the key to widely using the full potential of AI. Let's take a look at the broader picture of where natural language processing fits into artificial intelligence. Machine learning does not quite need human interaction. It improves itself through experiences, making it a subset of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence needs to be able to interpret languages as they are, like a human would, in order to demonstrate its intelligence and fully reach its capacity. In other words, AI must understand and naturally process languages. I'm sure you have all had some sort of experiment, experience with personal virtual assistants. Natural language processing aims to allow computers to decipher human language to the point that computers can augment human interpretation. The value of NLP is seen in many applications. Interactive voice responses can direct your calls or texts to the correct department. They must understand how humans speak and pick up irregularities and mistakes. Another application is, is speech recognition and language translation applications. Recently, I saw in the news that Google Translate caused some confusion between some people. In translating from English to Spanish, Google Translate put out, the vaccine is not necessary instead of the desired, the vaccine is not required. I have been learning Spanish and I can tell why this happened. The direct translation of not required in Spanish is, no es necesario. In some contexts, required and necessary have a very similar meaning. This is not one such case, so the translation is incorrect. To get a closer translation of the vaccine is not required, you could use no tienes que tomar la vacuna, which means you do not have to take the vaccine. This is an example of how NLP can be improved. Another application for NLP are word processors like Grammarly, which analyze text and can pick up the tone of writing, active versus passive voices, and improve the overall quality of a paper. And the last major use of natural language processing comes in the industrial fields, like telemedicine, online banking, and such. Considering that NLP is the bridge between us humans and the vast horizon with artificial intelligence, AI is only as useful as the bridge is wide. Oftentimes, the bottleneck in practically utilizing artificial intelligence is the difficulty in interaction and communication to humans. Language does not come as easily to machines due to its abstract nature. There is often not a single correct way to state something. Machines currently learn and interpret languages word by word without naturally understanding them. How frustrating is it when your personal virtual assistant cannot execute a simple task of yours because it did not understand it, even though it is, capable, it is capable of doing so? The vast numbers of irregularities and rules in linguistics makes it one of the few subjects that computers are yet to master. Now, let's take a look at some of the techniques used in NLP. First, there's tokenization, which takes a sentence and breaks it down into the words that compose it. It assigns a token to the word, so if the word were to appear in another sentence, they would have the same token and would be able to reach a more accurate definition. Stemming deals with removing the prefixes and suffixes of words to get down to the base or root. Consulting, consultation, and consultants all are variants of the word consultant, so they are all somewhat related. Lemmatization puts words into different base forms based on the definitions. It's easy to see how going is based on the word go. 
But it's not so obvious that go is the root of the word went. The uh, part of speech identification identifies the purpose of a word in a sentence. It resolves the context and finds out how the sentence, how the word fits into the sentence and it's, and it's how its meaning affects the sentence. Named entity recognition requires knowledge and data to work. Based on the context and the use of the word, NLP can recognize the meaning, whether it be proper nouns or generic names, like the cowboys. Lastly, chunking takes larger parts of sentences and groups them based on their relation to other words. Here, A, fast, and red all modify the word car, so they are grouped and treated like a single object. Next, we will take into a look into some of the challenges faced in natural language processing. I would like to point out the techniques currently used in NLP to address these challenges and how the language of Sanskrit has the properties to bridge this gap. With over 7,000 languages worldwide, having algorithms and programs to understand every grammar rule would be cumbersome. The language should not be the barrier between man and machine. Irregularities between written and spoken forms can also cause confusion in the meanings of sentences. If I say the red book, that could mean more naturally the book that is the color red, but it could also mean technically a book that has been read by a person. Without other sentences to give it context, how can one guess what the speaker is trying to convey? Humans are humans after all, and they have emotions. We often express our emotions in our words and use it to, and we use our tone to express this. However, you cannot write a tone, and picking up tones like sarcasm and voice recognition is also difficult. Semantic analysis takes sentences as a whole and is based on the meaning of these sentences. Why does the sentence mean what it means, and what are the elements that make that so? Syntactic analysis deals with the order of words in the sentence and the grammatical correctness. In many languages, Incorrect order of the words can lead to grammatically incorrect sentences. Now you might be wondering, can Sanskrit solve all of these problems? It absolutely can. Let's take a look. Although Sanskrit is among the oldest languages in the world, it addresses modern problems. It is highly structured, scientific, and most importantly for computers, logical. Let's take a look at how Sanskrit can address some of the challenges faced in NLP and artificial intelligence. Until a few decades ago, it was believed that natural human languages could not be used to convey messages to artificial intelligence. The thought was that an artificial language would have to be created. Having this intermediate so-called artificial language eliminates the need for multiple mappings between languages. I did a calculation, and there would need to be about 25 million bidirectional translations. Imagine having to create all of that. With an artificial language, there will only need to be as many translations as languages. Sanskrit serves as a great artificial language because of its logical nature and root words. Sanskrit really is a great natural language. <laughs> Here is the map of the languages spoken on the globe. Many languages can be grouped into 48 distinct families. The most notable one is definitely the Indo-European family. Both Sanskrit and English are part of this Indo-European family. So many of the languages spoken in the Indian subcontinent are as well. In fact, these preferred languages rank among the top 20 most spoken languages. And with an already strong root for some of them, implementing it in natural language processing and artificial intelligence would be easy. In spite of the many languages spoken, some of them is connected to many languages. So you can see that people already have a good idea. Sanskrit helps with stemming and understanding the roots of the word from many languages. It makes it easy for machines to analyze text. Sanskrit ultimately reduces the complexity faced by natural language processing by offering a solution that includes logical rules and, and linguistics without many irregularities and, and exceptions. Now that we have seen how Sanskrit can help deal with the sheer volume of languages, let's see how it can help with irregularities. Sanskritum is a natural language because it is mapped directly to the human physiology and is spoken exactly as it is written. More on that in a minute. However, if we look at 
this English example of this alternative spelling of fish, we can see that it could be written G-H-O-T-I. G-H as in enough, O as in women, and T-I as in nation. Yet this is, an, this is obviously incorrect. You can't spell fish as goatee. But this is a, an example of a rule that an NLP would have to cope with and have all these different programs to manage it. And it is not 100% objective. As I mentioned, subscriptum is mapped directly to the human apparatus. What it means to NLP is that subscriptum words have unique, unambiguous pronunciation. This is not the case with other human languages, as we have just seen. Varna Utpati Sananami is the idea that subscriptum alphabets map directly to our voice box. The first letter in the alphabet is K. We can feel that it originates in the back of our throat. And as we move further into the alphabet, we move to, for example, the letter M, which makes the sound from our lips. The sound originates from the back of our throat to the front of our mouth as we move through the alphabet. This makes some scriptum natural and the written forms line up exactly with the spoken forms. Clearly, some scriptum is proving itself as an ideal language for NLP. How can subscriptum solve the sentiment analysis issues in natural language processing? Your tone dominantly conveys your emotion and what you were trying to say. When I was first getting started in subscriptum, I thought there were only two variants of the vowel a. Uh. However, it turns out there are 18 different variations that will all help in making a distinct tone to convey your emotion. Firstly, there's the length of the vowel that affects the meaning. A, uh, a, uh, Ah, uh, the next one is interesting. When laughing, we are all usually loud and allow our throats to open up and be unrestricted. However, when conveying bad news, for example, we tend to restrict our airflow and be more discreet. Similarly, in Sanskritam, there are three such examples. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. As you can see, as my head was down, my throat was more restricted, but as I moved up, it became increasingly open. These are called Uddatta, Anudatta, and Svarita. The last variation has to do with whether the vowel is nasal or not. We have a uh or uh. If we do a little quick math, three variations in length times three variations in voice res restriction times two variations in the nasal effect gives you 18 different tones to precisely express your emotions. We have seen how Sanskritum provides different tones and precise pron pr pronunciations of varnas, or alphabets. There is a very established field of study, or shastra, called shiksha. It deals with how humans produce different sounds and where they originate from. This effectively puts tone into written form, further demonstrating the consistency of Sanskritum. The main objective of NLP is to understand the exact meaning of a sentence. As we have seen, connotations and inferences in some system can be put into an objective format. Furthermore, sentences in some system are not dependent on the order of words. Every word in some system has a specific definition and has variants to accommodate its different purposes and contexts in a sentence. For example, if I say Ramaha in a sentence, I know Ramaha is a subject, but if I see Ramam, I know that Ramam is the object now. Even still, if I see Ramasya, that indicates a possessive Ramaha. Changes to the word mean that each word always means, uh, means the same thing, regardless of its place in the sentence. Lastly, we come to how Sanskritam solves the syntactic or grammatical challenges. Fani is considered the first linguist, linguist to logically arrange grammar for a language. What if grammar wasn't standardized across languages? Would people across the world be connected like they are today? Imagine if we couldn't translate Greek or Latin. Would modern science be what it is without the work of Aristotle, Plato, or Socrates? As Isaac Newton famously said, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Today, let's talk about one such giant, Panini. He is most notable for his work, the Ashtadhyayi. Before Panini, the Indic texts written in the Vedic language were not easily accessible or understood.
Banini's Ashtadhyay codified language grammar into 4,000 sutras or rules. He created a pathway for deciphering ancient wisdom and made it available for the benefit of mankind. His concepts influence holistic health, meditation, yoga, philosophy, Buddhism, and fine arts. Panini's work marks the start of classical Sanskrit, which is the root of many languages. It is also a potential natural processing language in the field of artificial intelligence. Panini is the father of linguistics. He mapped phonics and incorporated the ideas of morphology to create words. His work is also the basis of the Turing machine, which is a computer that uses a set of rules to reach an answer to complicated problems. It is a precursor of the modern day CPU. Much of Panini's work ties into natural language processing, or NLP, which is the ability for computers to understand human language. This is critical in the fields of machine learning and AI. As we can see, Banini's work from 600 BCE is relevant in modern and futuristic technologies. His work helped rediscover native wisdom for a healthy, happy, and complete life. Banini, the father of linguistics, has made a positive impact on the world. Sanskritam is a well-structured language that has connections to many modern languages. It makes sense to use such a language for machines because it minimizes the abstractness in communication. It includes all the ideal characteristics for natural language processing. The structure of Sanskritam provides solutions to the challenges faced by natural language processing, so it can be utilized across all of AI, human interactions as an artificial language. Sanskritam addresses all five of the primary challenges faced in NLP, therefore can be seen as a language for natural language processing and artificial intelligence. Recent trends show Sanskritam is on an uptick. Sanskritam allows for artificial intelligence and machine learning to be used in broader fields and further our benefit with machines. Thank you. And I would like to end with a little prayer. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvinava Dhita Mastu Mavidvishavahe Om Shanti Shanti Shanti